Yeah, I'm looking at the lobby right now, and even though we don't know the picks and bans yet, Racy is standing there proudly as the robot, so I hope for change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he has it! There we go! Indeed. No way! He has it at the ready, so that means that Razy gets to start off map one, Awoken playing Clutch, his famous champion. No doubt that he is the best player in the world at that particular champion. But on the other hand, Chain actually seems to have taken a page from Rafa's book by picking the Athena, which we've seen used to again Clutch rather, but to great effect. What a filthy way to start the first I mean, look. map. Awoken and Clutch. Like, what <laughs> more could you ask for here? What a start. Racy's pretty much laughing at this point in his chair, probably. But looking at the second map as well, Chain does have the eyes and Nozzy has the top mid control and the mega setup. He should be okay, depending on if it gets the early frag. But yeah, it should be a lot of close games here, depending on how things will go. But Ruins as well, kill versus Slash, that should be uh, a fast one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it is it is funny to see that. Maybe maybe it is just like, well, this is the best of five, right? The best of three that's a little bit rougher. I don't know if, like, if you do take that out of the out of the uh, equation, right? Does it does it throw off another pick later on? I mean, hard to say. We, we've seen a couple of consistencies with a few different players throughout this. And this is one consistency that everyone seems to just let continue to happen. I mean, I'm looking at the matchup and uh, the the sort of the the fan of the individual champions in me is at least happy that we get to see some champions that really are that extension of a player's in-game personality. The clutch for Razor <laughs> speaks for itself. But Chain, uh, he's got a fan favorite Athena. He was one of the first players that we really saw uh, starting to, no pun intended, champion this pick um, and really get good results. A lot of players would use Athena in the Pro League and it was kind of wishy-washy. She just wouldn't really accomplish much. But then over time, on the sure. maps that she can thrive, Chain was one of those first players that really put her on the map and you know it's a, a battle of specialists on that first map for sure actually to add to that as well with the athena he's got a better chance of baiting out the shield and then he'll have a window of opportunity to try and at least tackle down raise that seems to be a possible game plan for him that's a you know interesting thought and i'm excited to, to kind of see what will happen here in game one certainly this is going to be a series about momentum talking a little bit about their previous history if there was ever a place to to step off on the right foot you know chain grabbing that game one would, would probably change the tune right a level of confidence a level like okay the past in the past we're here and now uh but still i think going to be a pretty tough matchup as well real quickly because we're about to jump in the game any predictions here crazy 3-1 same i'm gonna say free zero oh all right well the <laughs> predictions are in lock yours in as well we'll find out uh from our casters here in a moment what they think uh ladies and gentlemen uh, thanks for joining us for day three here the finals day of the quake world championship let's kick it off to our casters zsx and 40 lions Body, let's raise the roof because this map will be off the chain. Do you agree this will be a 3 1 3 0 for Crazy? Give me a second to cringe real quick. No, I'm so proud of you. Uh, I don't I don't know. It, it's hard. This is going to be really, really rough for Chain. I don't know how the clutch got through. Like, it's just, it's. it might be a bloodbath. Let's just start off here as we're going live. Razy wants to start off with the bang. Chain does have the Athena. And right off the bat, shotgun blast. The chase is on. Good defensive rail, but the stack is just too high and no. <laughs> oh, no. oh, okay. That's one right, way to start yeah. it. Let's go next. No re. First frag oh. with the gauntlet and the pressure is unrelenting. And I, I'm afraid we've seen this story before. I think it was Athena chain picked against Razy with clutch on Awoken at stage two. And I'm not going to lie, I still have nightmares about that match, let alone Chain, because it was one of the worst beatdowns I've seen in Quake history. And that's not the start Chain envisaged, I'm sure, when he entered this engagement. This is just brutal. Maestro after Maestro, quick starts as well, always putting Chain down. I saw what Wenger did earlier, Razy just starting off where Wenger left off here. And this is... This is nicer now that Chain kind of put a little bit of a halt to it, but Razy, I mean, Razy would be the player to start a duel off with a gauntlet kill, wouldn't it? It would, and it's with Razy. He's one of the players that I don't even know if he does it deliberately, but he takes that level of mental torture to another level. You know, most other players, we finish it off with a shotgun and just move on, but Razy has to find a way to humiliate you and pound you into the ground. And it actually really does play a big role in these type of games of 
People just don't want to go up against Razy. Absolutely brutal. I think you're absolutely right. I think it is on purpose. He knows what he's doing, and he's so damn good at it, too. That stack on that Astro Van is so huge right now. Chain needs to get out of here. Crazy. Doesn't want to go through the choke point just yet. Wants even more of a stack so he can tank anything the Chain throws at him. Just missing out on that jump. And very fortunate for the time being, but again, that's not going to stop Razy. <laughs> Have you ever seen a robot stalk his prey? This is exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> No, nor have I seen a fridge taking this much speed around a map either. And what is the game plan here for, for Chain? I think it has to be keep away, has to play the rail game. We've seen success in the past with Athena, notably with Rafa, but that was Blood Covenant. That was a completely different setup in terms of the map. Way more verticality, awoken, corridors, you can sneak up on your opponent, you can fly your opponent, and you can just oh. in their face. And that's what Rosie wants to do. He wants to close the gap. And Use that shotgun, use those close range. Just look at the stack, it's unbearable at the moment. Yeah, this is starting off brutal here. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Razy. You pop the shield, get up close, get out that shoddy Pippin, and just Campbell's chunky soup away at the light champion. Uh, Athena is great, but doesn't have that verticality on this map, like you said. And I, I think with the dash, I mean, it's it's pretty even. So this is... This is up to Chain to figure out some way to fight back here. The rails from distance are going to be decent. He needs to keep hitting them just like that. That's the opening that he needs. But Razy has been doing a good job up until this point of grabbing the items to keep that stack up. So this is kind of Chain's way back in slowly. If he yeah, can maybe this, get one more rail, that would be huge right now. You can see what Razy's doing here. He's one of the best. And this is why he's such a great clutch player, because as much as we see clutch flying around the map and imposing himself on his opponent, it's about these periods of downtime when you're vulnerable and there is no shield up. And it's how do you play around that weakness? And as you see, Razy plays it slow. He uses the information and he takes the jewel as if he was any other champion. Only when it's the right time does he go in. He's missed that item, so he won't want to commit. But a back-to-back -back rail does open the door for that final leap of faith. And the shotgun will be the weapon once again to take down the Athena. And then tactics aside, when he needs to, the aim is on as Razy 5-0 up. It's a great point. I mean, it is the aim that opens up the door for these type of situations. I mean, Razy is best known perhaps for his tracking, but it is his rail that is the key factor in all of these engagements. It's back-to-back -back rails, and then that allows him to use that shift ability to get in his opponent's face. So it's, it's, it, whilst he makes it look easy, it's the combination of all those factors that makes that pressure insurmountable. It's just crazy watching Razy get all over the map with this robot. Just such clean movement. Barely missing out on that rail, but he does have a shotgun and a shield, and he's got a plan. Chain needs to get out of there, forcing him to the LG side of the map. It's just a matter of time, though. Before this to Chain's wreck. credit, it's only 5-0. So yes, there is a long way to go in this map, but he hasn't given up too much of a lead. Razy smells that his prey is low, and he's just been chipping away at it the whole time. Chain very fortunate with that rocket pushing clutch back here. The LG into heavy machine gun, great damage. Chain on 25 HP. Razy just looks so comfortable chunking with that Ooh. shotgun and then into the rail. Fantastic shot again as he waits on this Mega, and the, the cycle continues. The cycle continues, and that push reeked of desperation. This one less so, but unfortunately, once again, the shotgun switch is the right decision. As Razy is moving around carefree at the moment. Chain has got him low, but um, Razy's already back to at least starting stack, and is looking punchy to take this next Mega. And it does feel that Chain is getting more and more desperate in all of these type of engagements. Just brutal. Just brutal. There's a good rail again. We've seen him hit those, but there is the mega pickup and the shield again. Another great rail. But the shotgun junk from up close. Have mercy, Razy. It's. Uh, it's, 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 it's you ever, you ever see the Simpsons where, where Ralph, oh man, I just, he's, he's already dead. Stop, stop, he's already dead. I, I know. He's... Nine zeros ESX. I don't know. I don't know about this. This is. A, a horrific start for the Canadian player. Just a little bit, and I'm not entirely sure there was going to be another outcome to this engagement. It is on the American server, so one can assume that Chain had first pick, which meant Razy had first ban and allowed Razy to pick the clutch. So, you know, you just chalk this one up to 
Raze is pretty damn good on the clutch. Particularly when you put it on a Woken. Yeah. The, the name of the game is just never let Razy play clutch at all here. Is Shane trying to make something happen? Can't run away. The robot will find you another frag. 12 at zero now. Could you imagine, like, if this was real life and you were just chilling in the park and then suddenly out of the bushes comes a 50-ton robot flying at you? <laughs> Going outside. <laughs> just, just... Hilarious. I would oh, yeah. never. How dare you? Um, <laughs> no, that would be terrifying. And, you know, being down 12-0 is terrifying here. And I'm sure Chain mentally has probably checked out and maybe been thinking about the next map already. And I wouldn't blame him. Three minutes left. It, it seems insurmountable at this point. That's a great rail. He is very low right now, but again, Razy has all these resources to work with, and he needs this frag right now as Chain pushes in. He's so weak in the shotgun again, coming in clutch for Razy. Pun intended. It's weak, but problem is, as a, even as Athena, Razy's out railing the light champion. It's quite remarkable. That's probably the most impressive thing when I see these matchups is that people go light and they try and use their own speed and mobility to get around Razy, but obviously he's faster and he's outgunning them. It's just disgusting. That was that was the forbidden dance right there. I don't know how Razy stayed alive. That was incredible. This chain was peeking over the edge. I guess he didn't catch him out, didn't have the weaponry, but Razy stays alive and getting uh, seconds closer. Well, that's a, just a shutout. And Henry comes with a shotgun again. This time he gets bounced around, but Chain is trying to stick around. He's not actually doing any damage. That's worrying. And yeah, this is this is the time where, yeah, I was about to say, this is the time where your corner, your manager throws in the towel for you. Says, please have mercy. Don't do this anymore. Don't kill my boy, please. He's like, you need to get out of the game. He's like, I got this, coach. No, no you don't. Just just stop. Just stop. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, I think, well, Chain will not leave the game, but I, I'm sure he's checked out, gone to refresh and evaluate. I, I don't even know. Like, this is the type of game. What do you evaluate? What went wrong? Uh, Razy Pick Clutch. Cool. Yep. Chalk <laughs> it up to Razy Pick Clutch. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, at look at that view. <laughs> Razy's just like, I'm just a guy. I'm just a robot, you know, just hanging out. Brutal, absolutely I, I, brutal, man. I, I, I don't know. Like the closest we've seen to the counter to this, if you will, uh, was Venga playing that Ranger. He clearly had a strategy, and he he came close. It wasn't a huge difference. Razy ended up edging it in the end. So it shows it is doable. But let's not forget that these two practice together countless, countless hours. So Venga has a much more intricate detail of how Razy plays it, and how to expose it, and when the clutch goes wrong. It looks awful. So we saw that with Garpy CNZ. There are times and places where you can expose the weaknesses to the clutch. And Chain does not have that answer. Didn't have the answer there. I mean, again, I go back to the way these maps have started for Chain, both in the series with Venger and now with the gauntlet kill against Razy. It's it's pretty brutal. And Chain has to do his best to just mentally reset and be like, that was just a clutch thing. That's it, I swear, and get back yeah. into this map because that is that is a rough start. I just think Athena has such a small margin for error. Like at least if you have a, a scale bear or a saw lag or a keel, we saw keel against Crazy with, I think it was clutch as well. Like at least you have that foundation to build off and just run at your opponent to try and man fight them. But the Athena, as we saw, like Razy was hitting rail, more rails on the Athena than he was, than Athena was hitting on clutch. So there's nothing you can do. Yeah, uh, he hit all the rails he needed to, but Clutch just huge stack, plated armor on that robot, and uh, yeah, they just, you hope to see uh, Chain bounce back and try and fight back for this, because I'm starting. It's starting to creep into my head. There could be a world where he kind of goes 0 and six, and you don't. You, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. He doesn't need that. Oh, the, the double dose of Maestro is just too strong. I mean, the panel said 3-0, 3-1. What is your prediction? I, I feel like Chain could... I, I would wipe that map clean. That didn't happen, right? Let's forget about what just happened. The series starts now. I feel like Chain can put up a map, at least. I believe in the kid. The comeback kid will put up a map. And those are probably fam uh, famous last words. But here, we're just seeing the highlight reel of Razy. It's uh, Shotgun Central. And just uh, really well played. 
by Razy. I mean, not taking anything against him. Just again, as we mentioned before, just because you pick Clutch doesn't mean you automatically get a win. You have to know how to use that champion. Sure. Razy, by far the best in the world on Clutch, and proving time and time again, ban it if you can. Get it out of there. Maybe even start counter picking it if you can't ban it. Just to get it out of his hands because yeah. he is a monster. He is rather scary. We're going to move on to Vale, which is chained pick. Um, I sent against Doom Slayer uh, on the EU server. Um, Chain is definitely exceptional on this map. We saw him play it yesterday to incredible effect. He has such creative use of the angles on the map um, and understands in detail how to play it. I think he even picked Ison, so we've seen him come to the fore there. Razy with the Doom Slayer. I'm sensing more aggression from Razy. Yeah, aggression, and then since you're up close and personal, a lot of rocket fights, so the double jump can aid him in kind of missing some of those direct and splash damage. I'd really like to see Chain set up those turrets over by the Mega. That seems to be super effective, kind of protecting the tele exit and just causing chaos when you try and go up there and actually fight for the Mega, and that's exactly what Chain needs to do. He needs a good start to the map, be it slow, be it getting a frag early, but just do not give up a frag early. It's happened far <laughs> too much. Please do not start playing from behind. It's just not going to be good. So that's that's what I'm hoping for, for his sake. Yeah, poor Chain has started four maps on the road now, <laughs> conceding a frag within the first 30 seconds. So it's been an uphill battle the whole time against Maestro. I do feel, though, that his style just struggles against Razy. Obviously, he's developed a lot as a player since he last met him in, in, a, in a tournament environment. But even still, the way in which Razy plays, he likes to be on the front foot and get into Chain's face. It does counter Chain's slightly more reserved rail-based style. And even when Chain wants to play that rail-based style, as we just saw with Razy, he's quite happy to re to resort to this to playing that man fight battle with the rail, and he often comes out on top. So Chain definitely needs to adjust somewhat. Um, and obviously, this is going to be the map to do it. His home pick, he has Ison. And he has to make something happen now if he's going to stay at this event. This one is going to be medium on medium champ, but I have this lingering fear and feeling that Razy's still going to start off super aggressive. I feel like he's in his head a little bit, yeah. especially after that gauntlet frag. I don't think he fears anything. The God Slayer, he just wants to get this over with. This is just a, another day at the office for him. Chain, send Chain your energy in the chat as we're going to go live on map number two. On Veil between these two, Razy versus Chain. Chain fighting for his life here. Rank 7 versus rank 8. And already we have an engagement straight away. Razy pulling out and bullying Chain away. And once again, Chain's going to go down very early here. He might be lucky and get away just for now. The rockets are good, but he's missed out on both major items. That's still huge. The fact that he that he stood his ground and forced Razy off is a victory. I mean, a small victories, right? Start off small. What is give it? Give up full control, but with chain and starts. What is it? <laughs> it must be reflecting and saying, "What am I doing wrong?" It, it, uh, it feels like he's just getting bullied. That's it. Like he's not expecting that kind of aggression. Uh, on that one, he did. He got a little bit lucky with the good defensive rockets, and he had the obviously the rocket available to him, which helps immensely. But he needs to be careful. There's the turret as Razy gets the high ground. He can deal with the turret oh, easily. No. Oh no, he's and can back away from that. That could have been disastrous there as he pushes through the telly. Interesting push by Chain. Maybe thinking Razy was moving off earlier than he was, and he's missed out completely on that mega. Got free, taken away, and stolen by Razy, as is the heavy, and Chain is now vulnerable. Chain, this is the time where Razy wants to push, but he also wants to evaluate the best course of action. Razy, extremely creative in the way in which he approaches fights, often catching his opponent off guard, and Chain has just retreated to the catacombs, doesn't want to show his face. So Razy says, that's fine, but early days, I don't want to lose this stack. Perfect timing on that heavy, deals with the turret without issue, almost getting that rail, threading that needle here. Good fake jump. Take the rocket and avoid it, and uh, this is the slow start that I think Chain needs. Nothing so crazy. Crazy. Holding on to the upper ground, that information from that rocket is going to give Chain kind of a, an exit strategy here as he knows exactly where Razy is. Razy's doing a great job of maintaining high ground until he absolutely needs to drop, and he finds his prey. Can he hit the shot? Very patient with the rail, but neither player will land some damage. Again, another cycle goes to Razy. 
Another cycle indeed. Chain setting up for this Mega, and this is a good chance for him to do some damage to Razy as Razy's on the low ground. Chain set up perfectly. He's got that turret in position. He himself is perfectly placed. Razy using the speed boost through perfect rocket to rail. The turret is going to get in the way, and doesn't matter. Razy just hops up above it and picks up that first frag with relative ease. I really loved that use of the teleporter speed. That was beautiful. That was he, he knew exactly how the defense was set up. He read it perfectly and he capitalized and Shane will get a heavy, but at what cost does the LG float from down below is so strong. A little bit of rocket damage with a follow-up rail hit. LG's out instead. Razy's still hunting. Tribolt from down below. Sending Shane packing it towards the rail room. Can he get away the shotgun? Almost chunking him there as we saw so much use of that on the first map But Razy wins out on the mega and that's good enough for him with the heavy coming up chain can't really fight for it Maybe set up for a rail if he's lucky, but it doesn't look like he's gonna be around No, he shouldn't be around as we've seen the power of Razy when he gets that stack and he finds chain in the vicinity Chain's already setting up for this mega, but it is very early I'm not sure if chain is miscalculated that timing because he seems to be standing on it and Razy's gonna be pushing in here realizing that chain is around Nice rail and dropping out the way. But it does allow Razy an easy pickup here. Stop watch. Oh no, Chain gets booted into the air and the combo is there and an easy finish. Chain realizing he was gonna die, wanted a last lick of damage. Can't even get that. I do feel that Chain needs to just craft more substantial openings. I mean, that was a, a vulnerable to position to be in and Razy understood what his opponent's up to. He thought he could make him ride the lightning crazy with a great rocket rail shotgun combo just hitting everything very unfortunate for chain but still early only down two this is the slowest game that we've seen uh on Chain's end, which again is good, but Razy is just so dominant right now. Full control of the map again, maintaining high ground, only really dropping down and pick up that heavy. You can and see the, the rails from Chain are good, but unfortunately they seem to be right before the major item, so it's all yep. useless damage. And if you looked at Razy's heat map, this is pretty much the first time he's been out of that central area. He, as you rightly say, his positioning has just been so alpha. And it's forced Chain away, but for the first time, they did exchange rails, and Chain has won himself a scarce item. They're going to contest here over the heavy. Razy's got the low ground, and Chain's going to find it difficult to get up there. The double jump is not enough as Razy's taken a lot of damage. He is very much railable. He snuck himself away, but Chain, being low himself, is skeptical about making any sort of advances. He's going to come on through, but it eats a rocket for his troubles and shouldn't be pushing through here because Razy is now healthy and will pick up the Mega. And despite the good work of Chain, he needs to start from square one. All undone rather quickly there, and Razy does a great job of dealing with the turret immediately. Doesn't want to fall for any shenanigans here from Chain, as Chain taking position down by that lower jump pad. Good rail, but again, the heavy's right up there, so again, you hit those rails, but you're giving up the items right after. You need to try and find a way to hit those rails after the item. Exactly, and this is, this is the problem, is that he's not doing enough in and around the pickups. It's a single rail here or there, and as you rightly say, it's generally just before the other pickups. Now, for the first time in this map, more or less, Razy is vulnerable. He will have to back off here. Chain should be able to get onto this heavy. I'm sure Razy will try to hit a rail, but now he's gonna be vulnerable. Chain knows he can push in. He's gone through the high ground. Lamb's gonna come out. Razy's been cornered here. Chain should be pushing in, and he does. He wants to get a relatively clean kill, and that is nice. Right in time for the heavy, right in time for the mega. Might even rocket jump up to try and get it. Raze is in position. He hasn't got any weaponry though. A little bit unfortunate for Chain. Did have to give up the mega, but still he put a frag on the board. He's uh, firmly planting his feet in this one. Not going to let it slip away. Still a down by one, but looking a lot more solid here as he's patrolling this rocket area. Doesn't want to give up anything for free. Makes the jump. Always terrifying to see that. Yeah. I am somebody who would miss that and then try to score. I wouldn't judge you at all as Razy jumps down. That's a good rail from Chain there. Again, the Mega giving Razy that overstack. Stack's about even, all things considered. The turret's going to be up shortly. And yeah, Chain's got to know that Rockets are in possession. If, if he didn't already, Razy with the flare right there, zooming past his head. Still up one frag, seven minutes in. This is getting a little tight here. It is indeed, but Chain's done a good job to stabilize, obviously, how much control Razy had for the first three or four minutes. Um, to not give away any more frags than he did is 
a feat unto itself. So step one is complete for Chain. It's about now how he can maintain control for himself. Try and get the item split a bit more, which is exactly what he's doing. Next objective will be trying to steal away that heavy. He drops down, but he doesn't actually take the Mega, and now he's worked himself away from the Mega. Overcomplicating that situation. And that feels bad, because now he needs to retreat. He shouldn't be showing his face. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's one of those things where if he would have hit, you know, two great rockets, it might have looked great, leaving the item up, dropping down on his opponent, but instead he just gives it up for free. Full map control back to Razy. Chain now on the back foot needs to be careful. That's a good rail in the Thunderdome there as Razy comes barging in. The chain's going to need more. Blocking that potential cheeky play through the teleporter with that turret. As he does, knocks Razy up for an easier rail. Nice positioning. I think he hoped it would actually stall him in this track, but instead it just floated Razy. He kind of used it as a jump pad, just right over, yeah. leapfrogging over it, but he did miss out on the Mega. Chain gets full control now. And as we inch closer to the deadline here, Chain looking strong to try and equalize it too. And Chain is so heavily reliant on his rail at the moment. Every time he misses it, it's extremely painful because he's letting Razy off the hook. And as many, for all the nice rails he's hit, he's missed an equal amount of potential easier ones. He's going to have to start hitting some more as the time is already approaching nine minutes and he is obviously the one who needs to be chasing Razy. Good back to back rails from Razy. Danes taking enough damage, will jump through the teleporter and retain position up on this high ground. Which he actually hasn't been enough for my liking. He's lived predominantly on the low ground. Really good rail. Smells blood. He's going to double back onto the Mega and have time to get back to the Heavy. Is Razy going to stick around here and risk the equaliz uh, equalizing frag? No, he's going to be out of there. 45 seconds left. Pressure mounting for Chain. He does have the stack, but now he needs the frag. Heard his opponent. He knows he's in the acid room. He's caught him through the jump pad, but Razy's already gone. Razy doing seconds. a great job of playing keep away. 30 seconds left. Chain needs to... Speed up here and try and find Razy. He's going to get one more cycle of items, but after that, it's go time. Caught him here in the rocket room. Razy's got great damage. Rocket to rare once again. Chain needs to pick up an item. Razy knows he's low, but won't want to commit. He's going to be hiding here through the acid room once again. We'll be retreating as he hears Chain on the chase. Chain doubles back, goes towards the jump pad. Razy once again will hear him. He's hitting, hiding in the corner. Rocket! And GG. That was unfortunate. Chain a little bit too slow near the end there, but very, very close. That's the kind of game I want Chain to, to play. And you saw right out of the gate, Razy put on the aggression and the fact that Chain stopped it, Razy was like, okay, I understand. I can't just bully you right now. And I think that's what Chain needs to do. Like on the third map, I expect Razy to be just as aggressive right off the spawn. It felt like there were times in that encounter where Razy was living in Chain's head rent-free, that Chain was second-guessing himself on, on where he should be standing or what he should be doing at certain times. And I think the ending showed it perfectly. Like, there was a time and a place to, to play slow, and he was obviously trying to trap Razy. But Razy countered that by playing slow himself and wouldn't move his position unless he hurt his opponent. So I think Chain definitely second-guessed himself quite a lot throughout that encounter, and that was one of the reasons why he just narrowly missed out on tying that up. Very, very close to that equalizing frag there, but Razy up to zero. Is the panel going to be right? Is this going to be a shutout? We're going to move on to the third map shortly here. Razy's going to be on the Galena, Chain's going to be on Anarchy, and we are going to Molten Falls. Right. Yeah, we saw Chain put up some decent performances on Molten Falls, but likewise, he is going up against Razy, and when you get to this stage of the competition, the margins are always so small, it's, you can't really put it down to a map pit. But we do, as you say, have Galena against the Anarchy. What is, what's your feeling of Galena on Molten, as it's a, a little a little bit of a rarer pick on the map? Uh, I like it because there's a lot of cheeky spots where you can put totems and get that overstack going. Uh, I also like it against Anarchy specifically because if you put those totems around corners, again, it's so easy with Anarchy to just kind of zoom around the map and just, I gotta go fast like Ricky Bobby, but then you just smack into totems, it gives you that information, you also get the damage, it stops you dead in your tracks, it's brutal. So I think that's a, that's a solid pick, but again, it, I think it's really going to be based on how the entire game starts for Chain. 
Yeah, and I, and I think as, as we've said extensively, he cannot afford once again to lose out on the start of the map. He needs to just play safe, play solo, get a, a foundation to work off. And I think he did that well. I want to see more urgency in his play. I don't think he opposed himself on the map, maybe gave Razy too much respect um, in the last map in particular. We didn't see him working the high ground enough when he had control. He still stuck to the low ground and played like the beta. So I, I just wanted to see, take the game to Razy a little bit more. Um, and this, this is really is his last chance in this event now. It is, if he loses this, he's out. And that would be such a shame for how well he's done up until now. This is it, tournament life on the line. This is where you need to play your best. Uh, I'd love to see Chain put himself in positions where he could deal some damage after the major items and make sure to clear out those totems as best you can because that overstack is going to be up. Exactly. Got, got to be mindful as well of the speed of the anarchy throughout. As you say, it's always a, a key facet in these encounters as well as using that inject just to, to restack and so putting more emphasis on the heavy could be a, a core tactic here. Is this going to be it? Razy up 2-0 in the series in the lower bracket. Is this going to be the end of our hero chain, the comeback kid? No better time than now. He really needs to poutine the work and we are oh, going to get right into it. How dare you? What do you mean? That was perfect. Um, yeah, I think, again, it comes down to the start and just being able to clear out those totems and dealing damage around the items after the pickup, and I think that's going to be the key for Chain. No, I agree. Dan, that, that, for me, is about being more aggressive at his positioning. He's only, he's only turning up in and around the item pickups and then disappearing off the map, and he wasn't stringing rails back to back as he has done in previous games, and, and Razy's too smart um, and too diligent to allow him to do that. So you have to be more aggressive and get in the face of Razy sometimes, even though it is a scary thought. And if he does that, he's, he's certainly in within a shout. And this is why I was saying that I do feel there's a bit of a clash of styles because Chain's passiveness allows Razy to sit back when he wants to and take those run engagements. And, and Razy was always the one for me to take the initiative. If you're Chain, do you still try and play how you were going to play. You know, you have a set game plan at the beginning of the series, right? Kind of knowing the pick bands ahead of time and then looking forward. Now that the maps haven't gone his way, do you think he adjusts already? Or do you think he says, okay, this is a new map, regardless of what happened, I just need to start playing my game? Or do you think we're gonna see that adjustment that he needs to have in terms of how to start? Does he expect somebody to, to, to attack off the spawn? And as we've seen countless times now, like at this point, I just want him to, to have a weapon out and just wait and make yeah. sure, okay, you're gonna play aggressive no matter where I am. Like, I just need to be ready. It's, it's a good question because like uh, Arena FPS and Quake is so intricate anyway because there's so, um, so many elements of strategy and obviously Quake Champions introduces a whole new level. So going into a match, you have to think about who is my opponent? What is their style? What do they want to do? And then, then that also changes based on which champions they've picked, which also changes on the map. So there's so many layers you have to think through. Um, and at the end of the day, the simplest answer and the most boring answer is you need to play the way that makes you feel comfortable uh, and not change it based on circumstance or, or how you sit in a series because if you're not feeling your game, and if you're not comfortable in your game, you're not going to play well. Can we talk about that totem? I mean, it's a raise. <laughs> oh, which totem? He threw it on the top of the arch right in the rail room. It's yeah, it's a Razy totem. Yeah, yeah. It's a Razy totem. Beautiful for those who haven't seen it. Is Razy playing very, very slow, trying to trap in the rail room here. Doing a good job of getting those time shards. And he's going to have two totems up rather quickly. And again, the overstack is, is eminent. It's going to be brutal for Chain. It is the first game we've seen him Chain for a while where there has been an even trade of items off the start. So Chain has that foundation to work off. He's also got the high ground advantage here over by Razy. We saw earlier in the day the way in which Venka was countering Chain on this map was just playing that plus back game on the items. But Chain has mistimed that item way too early. Razy capitalizing on it, falling back, suggesting to Chain, hey, the item's up and I don't want to contest, but nope, it was a trap all along. Really good play there from Razy, unfortunate for Chain getting caught out, and now he might get caught out again, needs to be careful. Razy lying in wait, there's the rocket, he wants to chase with the LG, Chain has nothing to work with. 2-0 up easily for Razy. Also enjoying that totem consistently placed by the teleporter. You obviously mentioned it before as the Anarchy could just run around gobbling up totems that does a considerable amount of damage to his light stack. And 
Going through the teleporter is always one of the critical paths that the Anarchy will need to take at some point. So keeping a good placement there will ensure you should get free damage. Free damage and information, and that's huge. As Razy stack is gigantic. Great rail around that pole there. The rocket's raining in from Chain, trying to get some damage. Good rail. As the tribal not landing for Razy, can't find any damage, but that's not gonna stop him. The rocket jump up. He wants this frag. Aggressive play with the LG into the rail. Little miss, he does have a totem in the back pocket though. And there it is, the overstack, trying to hunt him down with LG again. Jay needs to be careful, good rocket, but Razy prevails and grabs the mega three HP for Razy on that one. He's also going back to set up for the heavy. I, I would love to see Chain put some damage out here because he knows Razy's weak. He's gonna be there, but he's gonna be a second late. That's painful for Chain as that was a key opportunity for him to try and impose himself and it's small things like that where I'd love to see just more urgency coming from Chain and once again the overstack is up, it's not something Chain will be aware of so gotta be wary, Ch oh the Razy did miss the item pickup, doesn't come back to haunt him however. Razy making his way back over to the heavy which will be up shortly lots of nail spam chains gonna be down below and he's gonna get the heavy but he's gonna take so much damage that follow-up rail doesn't land luckily for him and the actually the return rail is fantastic from brazy hits one of his own now it's gonna be a fight to the death totem comes down the overstack saves his life still very weak tribal is it gonna prevail oh my word wow moments, both players exchanging rails once again this, this is one of the reasons why Chains finds it so hard to catch the Galena out in the open. It's Razy that actually comes out by exchanging rails time and time again. It nullifies the way Chain wants to play. Great back-to-back -back rails. Can't finish off with a third. He is low. They're both low. Razy switching to Tribolt, forcing Chain away as he is scared of more of that splash damage coming out. And Razy is now weak and will miss out on the Mega. Okay. That's how you get that totem. That's so cheeky, Razy. He's just getting so much mileage out of those totems. You saw in the middle of the fights too, the pocket totem, the ones that are already down, the overstack healing him. They're saving his life quite literally. Here's the tribolt spam coming in. Again, overstack already ready. There's a rocket from above. He's gonna chase with the shotgun through the telly. Chain dropping down too early. Oh. Why are you dropping in that situation? It's unnecessary. And I want to point out exactly what you said. It's remarkable how Razy's had three overstacks already in the first four minutes, and he's only had one of these more creative positionings of his totems. So, I mean, it's it's hard because there's so many things to be doing at once within a duel like this. But Chain needs to be taking out these totems. Shotgun to the face. Chain will need to back away now. Wants to do one more. Just careful of Razy pushing up. Or, I don't know. To me, it feels Chain's a little bit rattled again. Razy's playing so solid, and the totem placement is everything, right? Hide one, really cheeky, have one at the uh, telly exit, and then keep one in your pocket, and that's exactly how Razy's playing. <laughs> okay, just the self damage to sweep up the map, and this is what happens when Razy feels momentum. He does just begin to eat all resources, and Anarchy's not left with a lot to live off. He is using the overstack fairly often, though, and it will be back up again for the next engagement, but as is Razy's own overstack. And he's also been eating up all major items. If Chain goes through, there we go. He knows the totems are there. Rocket jumps around, clears out two. It's methodical. You have to take it a step at a time. And coming in, this is a dangerous push as he doesn't seem to have the lightning gun. If he does, it's not out. And he's trapped himself in a corner. Razy buying his time. He lets Chain get away, but Chain popped the injection. He took the mega and he's out of position for this heavy does get back to deal a little bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. As Razy still a firm 4-0 lead, six minutes in. And I do like that play from Chain earlier, Rocket jumping around, doesn't trust the telly, but part of me thinks that Razy saw that, and now he's gonna set a trap there, knowing that Chain is gonna wanna clear out like that. He might float him with LG or something, so Chain has to be careful. As again, using all those time vials very well, and again, overstack for Razy. I don't know how he's got so much of the service stack. He's also caught Chain here. Chain actually just fortunately drops onto that heavy, slightly to the surprise of Razy, but the overstack is there. Nice double back from Chain. He did need a totem, but it was totally worth it. The gent comes out because now he wants to contest for this mega. He knows he's up. He knows the timing, but Razy's under him. He's pinned him and somehow gets the frag. What a float. 
Rizzy with the best Pennywise impression. We all float down here. 5-0. I mean, what can Shane do? Seven minutes, he's got to start being a little more aggressive. But again, you get you get in these positions where you they're not optimal, but you have to take them. You have to get back into this game. And Rizzy could just start playing hyper defensive if he wanted to at this point. I mean, that was the play. He had done everything so well. He got fortunate in the previous engagement to pick up that heavy, but the double back rail was spot on. He didn't account for the overstack from Razy. He had the timing on the Mega, popped the inject, and just got floated like Aladdin with his magic carpet. Couldn't get down. Very near and dear to my heart, thank you. 5 0, 7 30 in. As Razy will concede heavy. Playing a little bit slower, but again, he doesn't really have to push anything, doesn't have to do anything crazy. Almost rails Chain off the map. The return rail from Chain will land, and Razy's down to 100 HP. He does have a totem in his pocket immediately. Do not die yet! And once again, we're at that point where it's been a fairly slow and steady map from both players, but time is running out for Chain to stay alive in this tournament. I mean, and if we're looking at this brutally, I think he's had one frag in this series so far. So where is he going to conjure six from? He really has to be allowed with his magic lamp if he's going to get through this one. I think he's all out of wishes, though, it seems. As he drops down, this is a good start here, but he needs to be so careful. And he knows that he has no choice. He's going to tank all of that totem damage and be so weak. Shotgun out for Razy. He knows if he shows his face again, he's going to blast him. This is just chunking out the time. Razy looks like he's on his way to a 3-0 victory. And Maestro is going to haunt Chain's nightmares. What a rail. Oh my god. These are so nice. And Chain, he did pick up the heavy, but he's used the inject. Great rocket. He's going to have to convert this one. He's run through a totem to make it happen. But look how low he is. And there's nothing up for 10 seconds. Razy, know that. Great rail. Can he convert? He's going to have to. Razy doubling back. Going for that rail himself. And Chain's nearly out of time. He's got time for one more item. He can't even really rush this heavy. He just hasn't got the time. Good play from Shane. He has all the information he needs to catch him. There's the jump down. He just needs the damage. Now, now it's going to be just Telly play, isn't it? Yep, there it is. Catches him out. And Razy somehow point blank shotgun rail gets wow. Shane. And that is a heartbreaker for sure. It is a heartbreaker. The comeback kid. I don't know, man. This 30 seconds. Zoot, there's still time, but five frags. Oh, that's going to be a good start. Ignorance is bliss, but I don't think anyone can discount reality that hard to suggest Chain can do this now with 20 seconds to go. Unfortunately, he will be leaving us from this tournament. Coming up against Razy, somebody he hasn't had good fortune against in the past. And for me, the story of this is he gave Razy a little bit too much respect at times, and Razy outplayed Chain at his own game. Like the amount Razy was hitting in terms of rail against Chain as he as a glory rocket jump was just insane. And Chain didn't have an answer for that. So good games coming out from both players. Razy will be moving on to meet Dehang, who had a very close encounter against CNZ. Uh, and we will have three Maestro guys in the top four, which is a great achievement for the organization.